Welcome to the Jeremiah Show. Happy Thanksgiving. Let's celebrate Thanksgiving together. And let's do that at the JAR, the JAR restaurant, thejar.com. Check it out while we're talking right now with uh, a good friend, hasn't been on for a little while, and she she weathered the storm, uh, the restaurant storm over the last couple of years. And I think that's the last time we talked to her was about midway through. And I'm so happy to see her. I'm so happy to hear that JAR uh, is coming back to pre-COVID numbers and and even exceeding that and that people are out and hanging out and, and h- hanging out at the bar at jar restaurant um welcome back to the show chef suzanne tract owner and chef at jar well thank you thanks for having me jeremiah okay now i told you <laughs> thank you for being here i told you that i I just love your accomplishments and I won't read them all because you told me they're too long, but I think you've, you've earned every one of them and so many more. And I feel like I'm doing you a disservice, but also the listener disservice not to let them know how cool the presence of cool that they are in (laughs) the privilege to have some time with you because you don't do a lot of interviews and you don't, you, you love what you do, which is being in the kitchen and cooking and feeding your guests that just uh, flock to your restaurant and and uh, and enjoy themselves and are so happy that your doors are reopen. Well, let me give you a little bit though, because I want to spend most of the time with you. If you don't know, Chef Suzanne Track, she is a driving force in the Los Angeles culinary scene. She built Jar into one of the most beloved and successful restaurants in Los Angeles. She drew inspiration from classic American comfort cuisine, which is my very favorite. So her f- restaurant is my very favorite type of, of, of food, and her food is just spectacular. Jar is a pilgrimage for passionate eaters and wine lovers from across the country. It's a modern American chop house, and it continues to receive acclaim for its atmospheric setting and exceptional steaks raises and seasonal sides including her sumptuous signature pot roast which along with her char sui pork has been cited by culinary heavyweights on the food network's popular series the best thing i ever ate and it's definitely worthy of the show's title with its retro modern decor it evokes the aura of a timeless supper club Jar has become an indelible part of the city's culture, even starring as a memorable location in the Academy Award winning classic La La Land. I know so many people who love that. That's part of it was filmed there. So now, you know, Um, you utilize the finest local ingredients before that was a thing. Uh, Chef Suzanne delights everyone in taking classic chop house dishes like deviled eggs, blue cheese, wedge salad, and prime steaks and updating them with a California sensibility. The season driven menu offers appetizers and salads with an emphasis on braises, like I said, grilled meat, seafood, as a bunch of uh, sides and traditional sauces. During the holidays, which we're in right now, you're lucky if you can get a seat, but go try anyway, because even if you can't and you have to stack three deep at the bar you're going to meet some very cool people you're going to have some great smells to uh, keep you hanging around and then when you get that coveted seat at the bar or in the dining room you're going to enjoy it so much better because you earned it so during the holidays jars beloved passover seder seder and thanksgiving dinners have earned ritual status and i do mean ritual status and you're back uh is this the first time back like fully since COVID or was last Thanksgiving a little, a little bit more normal? Well, well, since the pandemic, we are, are now just doing, um, we are doing to go Thanksgiving dinner. So it means that you, you pick up Wednesday. It's our, it's our, our full menu that we usually do. And, you, and we give it to you with beautiful reheat instructions. And, uh, we take the day off on Thursday on, on Thanksgiving. That's, um, in my years of business, 
since I've been working since I was 19, I've never taken a Thanksgiving off. And I have to tell you, to be able to do that and to work hard and to put out a lot of dinners for people to go and enjoy in their homes and to give my uh, the, the staff off to be able to relax on Thanksgiving, it's a, it's a kind of, it's a nice feeling. I never thought I would imagine that, but it feels really good. Yeah, it's not it's not typical, and that's what a gift uh, not only for yourself and your your mental health and your well being uh, to finally allow you know to take that time off after you've really worked hard in your industry to get to the top. Uh, right. but- not, nothing, and by the way, nothing's typical anymore. But we do do, but put out a lot of dinners. We're cooking right now today, and we're getting ready for you know people to bring jar into their homes and enjoy. Hmm. And as, do you see that as a new model, Chef Suzanne? Do you see that as a model that you can expand on more, or that I, might? Be- I I do. I see it with I see it with myself, and I see it with other other restaurants in the city. Absolutely. Are you having trouble like everyone else's in the industry uh, finding staff to to fulfill the the positions that you have, or or are you okay there? <laughs> you know what? Um, I knock on wood. I, I am very lucky. It is very, extremely hard to find staff, but I have had a staff that has been with me for for a while now. And, you know, we, we like to work with each other, I guess. You know, I mean, there's always the heat of the moment, but. I guess, <laughs> I think, but, <laughs> you never but know. But we're, we're, you know, we're, I'm, I'm fortunate to, to have my my main staff, my main people that I work with that, that run JAR, that make JAR so successful here with me. You know, you're only you're only as good as as the people that you're you work with. And as you know, the, the dining room and taking care of, you know, servicing the guest. That's that's very important to me. And, you know, thank God I have that staff. But I will tell you what has changed in jars. We were closed since the pandemic. We've been closed since uh, uh, Monday and Tuesday. And by doing that it makes sure that if we have to work hard if we have to work a little bit overtime we always know we're going to have monday and tuesday off and that's important it's important for everybody's health uh they always know they're going to have the day off we're not you know working ourselves to death but that's that's what the times have have uh had in store for us i guess i'm of course i'm from the old school you're open you're paying rent seven days a week yeah. you're open seven days a week yeah. well it's not like that anymore <laughs> now, th- but that's cur- uh, th- that's interesting to me too because I've been an operator for uh, many years in restaurants and hospitality. And Mondays and Tuesdays, we all know, are the hardest days to fill the seats. And you're typically operating in the red, but you keep it open because you pay, you know, some of your rent and your some of your labor and things like that. Um, what does that do? Does without giving away <laughs> your financials, I'm not asking you to do that. But does, what does that do to your overall? Are uh, are you able? Are you seeing like this could be a new model too? Like we can survive, and uh, you know we take advantage of my labor's lower, my la- you know my um, some of the overhead that are typically the larger costs on your line items are now a little bit less, and you you're doing okay. Is there a wash? I mean, we know, we were never brave enough to try that, right? Like just like you said, old school. All right. Well, I I think what it is 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 is, is mainly there is eventually, hopefully, we'll open on on Tuesday. But you know what? Right right now, if I had to open Monday and Tuesday or even Tuesday, I would have to find more staff. Mm-hmm. And right now, it's very very hard. And I don't you don't want to over work i mean we all work hard but you don't want to overwork your staff overwork yourself and be stressed out because it's going to tell in your service and in your food so why not make everything as perfect perfect as you can take care of your staff take care of your ingredients take care of your ordering and make everything you know so so everything works out for the best don't don't kill yourself don't kill your staff don't rush it I like that, and uh, I I want to check in with you on that because you uh, that first opening statement that you are a driving force in the Los Angeles culinary scene, and I would argue um, an international culinary scene. You you've taken a lot of chances and and brought a lot to the restaurant world that others have um, um, 
respectfully borrowed and used. And I think it's it's an interesting, you know, the the, the taking jar home and making sure that the vessels and the and the ingredients and all that are just as good as you would have in the restaurant and assembling them or whatever, but also maybe closing down on those nights that were never money makers and uh, helping your staff, helping you with the staff. And I'll, I mean, I think it's all brilliant. And, you know, I think you're a trailblazer in this industry. So um, listen up out there. Uh, I, uh, speaking to the staff, though, Chef Suzanne, if you wouldn't mind, um, in the, I, I just did a plea in the last half hour uh, to – to, to people out there that are maybe looking for their first job or have been unhappy with their other jo- you know, their desk job. To me, the hospitality business uh, is the very best business you could go into. It doesn't matter what age or where, you know, what level of expertise you can go where you want to go. You can make great money. Uh, you can work less hours and, um, and you're going to meet the very best people in your life, not only in the dining room, but the, uh, you know, the, the kitchen at the end of the night, you know, in the back alley having a cold beer or, uh, you know, out of a brown bag and just, just going, God, we just got through that. Can you believe that? Or right. showing up at a friend's apartment, you know, at 1 a.m. and you're young and you're, you know, you're, you're talking about life and everything else in it. You meet the very best people in this industry. Yeah. That you we're, we're a tribe. We're, we're, that's a tribe. The tribe. <laughs> What, what would you, because you and your fellow chefs, restaurant owners are facing this hardship with, with staff, what would you, like, if you had to make a, a public service announcement for the, for your business, what would you, how would you sell it to them how, to get them to apply, to get out there and apply at restaurants again? Um, you know what? It, it, it has to be it has to be applied to to somebody that that has a work ethic first of all because I, I i can't i can't give somebody a work ethic that they they have to have it themselves um it has to be somebody who wants to grow that loves what they do i mean from the second i walked into a kitchen i'm like oh yes that's this is it this is where i belong i belong in restaurants i belong in hospitality <clears throat> I belong knowing that the customer always comes first. You know, there's a few exceptions here and there, but you you have to have a sense of belonging. So what if I have to work Thanksgiving? So what if I have to work Christmas? Um, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to, I don't know. We used to play hard, but anyways. But if, if, if everything you do right and you have a great value system, you eventually, you, you will grow you will grow in the business but you have to love it you have to like it and you have to be able to know that you don't know everything and know that you you have to learn you, you can learn i mean i'm still we, we, i never stopped learning do you ever stop learning i'm you know at this age i was learning right now from you yeah i would love to go stage in someone else's kitchen once in a while and you know well that's interesting just for the, well just you know to to learn different things there's so much to learn and i love food and i love um giving people jobs that's i love supporting my farmers i love you know my uh, people i have a lot you know my relationships with my purveyors that i've had for many many years that's all very important to me i'm so sorry i just interrupted you but your purveyors interesting topic to to kind of stop on for a second these purveyors, these farmers, these artisan, you know, cheesemakers or wineries, breweries, uh, you know, the list goes on. All the people that you source from to create this, this meal, this experience at JAR, um, they went through this as well. And maybe, uh, you know, are, how, how are they doing? How are, promote them, if you don't mind. Some of the people that you're sourcing maybe for your Thanksgiving menu right now. Uh, well, like like some of my farmers that that I, that really yeah, helped me out, um, like from uh, Bal- the Balter Farms, they're in Somis, and they all they've been delivering to me even through the pandemic. I've even you know had some extra time and gone to their farms, and that's the Balter um, Farms. Also in Santa Barbara, Roots in Santa Barbara, uh, John. He's he's always been really great. He has the most beautiful produce. 
that's, you know, whatever's in season, I, I, I try to support him as much as possible. Matter of fact, I have a small home in Ohio. So when I'm leaving either Tuesday morning or Wednesday morning, he delivers it to my house and I race back to jar. So, you know, you'd like to promote the, pe the people that help you out. Also, um, my good friend, Julie Harmon from Ocean Jewels, always been there for me for, for three restaurants already. Um, you know, what uh, Roger Bachman from Newport Meat, on and on and on. Oh, I love it. Yeah, the guys in <laughs> that are great. You and Robert. Um, well, thank you for mentioning them. I think it's important for all of us to, you know, our support from our staff to to our purveyors. Let's talk about your Thanksgiving menu um, a little bit, if you don't mind. Sure. Do you want me to go through it, or do you want to tell us what you got uh, what you got planned? I've got it right in front of me. If you if you want me to set it up. <laughs> Well, I can, I can, I can start. We, um, we start you with a, um, we do it every year. We do a chestnut chickpea soup, which is one of my, my favorites. And it, it's really great for this kind of cool weather. It's, it's hearty. It's got the earthiness of the garbanzo beans and the sweetness of, of the chestnuts. It's not a water chestnut. It's a chestnut, roasted chestnut that we make in the soup. So we start, we, we have that. We also, and then we go into our turkey. And <clears throat> this year we're using the Mary's as we did last year, the organic turkeys. Ordered and paid for them a couple months ago, by the way, everybody. Oh, smart. <laughs> yes, that, yes, smart. There's a little bit of That's a turkey shortage. <laughs> a little bit of a turkey shortage. Yeah. So um, don't, don't ask me last minute if I can get your turkey because the answer is going to be no. How many friends have called you up and said, hey, chef, uh, <laughs> half a dozen. <laughs> what half about a dozen? for me? <laughs> half a dozen. Like, can I buy it? Can you get me my turkey this year? And it's like, nope. I'm so sorry. No, no. You know, if you get into jam, I'll, I'll try, but I can't. I, I have enough on my plate and it's really hard. I couldn't even get an extra turkey for myself. <laughs> Which well, is fine. You can order for, from your restaurant for yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So anyways, luckily, um, another purveyor I have, Rocker Meats, they, I've learned this a, a few years ago, they are breaking down, they break down my turkeys. So right now they're going to be breaking down my turkeys so that from the breast to the thigh and the drumstick. So what do I do is I confit the, uh, the dark meat. So the leg and the thigh gets confit. The breast, the whole breast on the bone, everything's still in, intact on the bone, just not all together. That goes into a brine and then roasted to perfection. And then yeah, we, we slice it up and we put it on the stuffing. Now our stuffing is a cornbread stuffing. We use sourdough bread in there as well. A beautiful turkey sausage, shiitake mushroom, and all the fixings. And that's... <coughs> And that, that is, uh, I, you know, I can't wait to eat it every year and then I don't want to see it for another year because you just keep picking it and picking at it. Um, we make our own cranberry relish. We made that the other day. That's ready to go. We do mashed potatoes. Uh, this year, what, else, what am I missing there? Oh, we do long, long cooked kale. So it's a Tuscan kale. We long cook it in uh, extra virgin olive oil a little bit of onions, garlic, and a porcini broth. So that's mm -hmm. that's all vegan. And I think- uh, Cream corn, do you see cream corn? Oh, would... yes, we, yes, you can order that. That's um that's an extra if you want cream corn because I decided to put it on there because everybody's gonna ask anyway. See, you, I wised up. <laughs> so if you want extra, if you want to add cream corn, and we already have quite a few, you know, it, it's, it's unbelievable. The corn is still good at this time of year. It used to be- Eat. About five years ago, you couldn't even get corn this time of year, but now who knows? It's warm everywhere. It's, we're still getting great corn. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so sweet, so so great. I had some the other night. I threw on the grill. You can do a meal for four, and you can do a meal for eight, uh, right. and add on if you've got a larger family. You you need to place your order by six p.m. Saturday, November nineteenth. You pick up Wednesday, November twenty third, from one to five. Jar again, just to remind you, will be closed on Thanksgiving Day. And place your order as soon as possible, as they do expect to sell out at Jar. Um, the Jar menu will not be available. And they, uh, 
and the rest of the stuff. You can check it out on thejar.com. Uh, Suzanne, Chef Suzanne. And don't forget the gravy, too, because everybody just wants to take a bath in that. Like, can I have more? Can I have more? Descri- <laughs> do you want to describe what makes your gravy so special? It, it, uh, it's not often that everybody just, you know, eats, you know, gravy with their mashed potatoes. Maybe it's that once a year. So they just really want to have plenty and enough because everybody wants the gravy. They want to put it on their turkey. They want to put it on what, like I say, they want to take a bath in it. And it's, it's nothing. It's, it's just regularly we, we take all the bones and the neck and the wings from the turkeys. We make a stock, roast them off, make a stock, and we just make a simple gravy. Now, if I wanted to take a bath in your gravy, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> how much gravy would I have to order? <laughs> well, how big is your bathtub? I'd, I'd say maybe I've, 20 gallons. <laughs> yeah, you've just given me a really good idea. Um, maybe, maybe not. We're not going to tell. <laughs> Oh, Chef Suzanne, I have so much fun seeing you. Uh, 20 minutes isn't enough time with you, but, you know, your time is precious, and you are working overtime right now to feed so many for Thanksgiving. What is your favorite part about Thanksgiving? And do you have, uh, you know, a special memory from your childhood or recently that you could share with us, um, a little peek into your life, and uh, and then we'll let you go. You know what? My, my favorite part about Thanksgiving is is – is being around family and getting up early, getting that turkey in the oven, having those smells all day, having, um, you know, your friends and family that everybody has something that they're doing. Uh, just <laughs> opening. Is- uh, oh, and another one of my other great things is, is you know, by, by noon, you're opening, you know, a, a, a big old honky champagne, bottle of champagne. And you're just, you're just, you know, you're celebrating life. Wait till noon. Yeah. yeah no, okay. I, I just said that. Shh, don't tell anybody. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Your secret's safe with me. What right. happens in the kitchen stays in the kitchen. <laughs> exactly. Well, you need a little champagne while you're prepping everything. Hey, why not? Right. Julie Childs did it. And... Julie Childs loved it. She, yeah, she did exactly. it. I, I'll do it. <laughs> exactly. Um so I wanted to also mention, I love that. That's a, that is a good, see, I hadn't even, this is why it's so fun to talk about this stuff because it's, I hadn't even thought about that, but that's the thing that we all look forward to. You like to get up and you smell it already. You smell the, the turkey cooking and all the, and then everybody comes together. You know, uh, I still say the best parts of life are around the table, you know, with your friends. Exactly. And family. Oh, and by the way, the champagne, I, I, I don't, I, I go with the magnums. It's the only time a year I'll, I'll open a magnum. First of all, the champagne is supposedly better in the Magnum. Uh-huh. Which it is. Yes. You have plenty, and it's, and wink, it's just wink. beautiful to see that big <laughs> bottle there of whatever. Hey. Drink, whatever you choose. I don't judge anything over here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm an advocate of whatever you're doing there. You're doing it right. Um, praise for JAR over the years includes acclaimed late – Pulitzer Prize winning Los Angeles Times and LA Weekly restaurant critic, beloved and missed restaurant critic, Jonathan Gold, who gave Jar a coveted spot on his 101 best restaurants in LA list every year since its inception. Jonathan said, Suzanne's gift lies in her ability to reproduce the old taste within a modern context so that the sauteed pea tendrils with garlic make as much sense as the cream spinach, the duck fried rice, as the mashed potatoes. And uh, the, I don't know if I'm saying this right, and if I butchered it, I'm so sorry, but the char suey style pork chop. Yes. I'm filet mignon. Uh, I haven't had that yet, so I've got to, I, I, I associate the, uh, the pronunciation with eating two or three of them at a time. Um, <laughs> She's got other accolades, which include Los Angeles Magazine, The Wall Street Journal, Bon Appetit, Savour, Food and Wine, Gourmet. Uh, the list goes on. L, In Style, Zagat, and Eater. She's been on Top Chef, Hell's Kitchen, Entertainment Tonight, and the countless cooking shows. And she's been our special guest this hour. We're talking Thanksgiving. We're talking about her menu at Jar. She's going to take the day off. So get your order in now so she can take maybe two days off or a little less stress on the on Thanksgiving. Chef Suzanne, 
it's so such a pleasure always to see you uh to talk to you and i hope yeah, you have yeah. just a really nice thanksgiving the way that you that you love it put that turkey in early and friends start showing up as it's as the turkey goes out into the neighborhood smells right yeah <laughs> And uh, and if you don't find a turkey, you can come to our house. <laughs> okay. Oh, thank you. What do you have one running around or what? what, what <laughs> <laughs> Richard's trying to catch it right now. It's in the studio. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> All right, jar, the jar dot com, Instagram at jar restaurant, at Facebook, jar restaurant. Let us celebrate Thanksgiving together, and uh, to the jar restaurant team and all of your family that work for you there. Chef Suzanne Tract has been our special guest and Chef Suzanne, uh, have a wonderful Thanksgiving with your friends and your family. Thank you, you too. Okay, pre-order through the website, thejar.com. And communicate. No, don't do it now. Don't do it now. Richard's telling me not to do this now. Well, you, I think you should listen and eat, eat a lot for Thanksgiving. All right, that's my, that's my sign off. Chef Suzanne, thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Talk to you soon. Bye. Cool. Do I have my next one? Yeah, that's your next one. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to Is she here? Yeah, yes. good. Cut it. That'll be easier for you, right? Cut.